We end today's show remembering Black Lives Matter activist Marshawn McCarroll. On February 8th, he shot himself to death at the entrance to the Ohio State House in Columbus, Ohio. He was just 23 years old. Marshawn uh, organized against the police shooting of Michael Brown and Ferguson and worked to aid the homeless. He launched a program, Feed the Streets, after he himself was homeless for three months. Hours before he shot himself, Marshawn wrote on his Facebook page, My demons won today. I'm sorry. Just before his death, Marshawn was honored as a hometown hero at the NAACP Image Awards for his community project, Pursuing Our Dreams. When I was in Ohio yesterday, in Columbus, I spoke to a group of high school students and their teacher, who knew Marshawn well. Steve Shapiro is the program director for Mosaic, a high school humanities program that draws students from across Columbus, Ohio. Mosaic is a high school humanities program for creative uh, young people from across Franklin County. And uh, Marshawn was not only an amazing kid as a student, but he came back many years as a guest speaker for us. He spoke not only about activism and about strategies for making social change, but he also spoke about white privilege and about racial uh, questions. And he was he was a brilliant, brilliant uh, guy and a, someone that our kids fell in love with every time they saw him. Mm -hmm. And. You're the head of the program? Program director. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Marshawn? Uh, like we meet all of our students, going out and recruiting and sharing information about this program. And I think Marshawn saw, as a creative and a socially conscious young man, saw this as a really unique opportunity, but also recognized himself as being um, not like many of the other kids who came from privileged suburbs. And I think he wondered, is this the right place for me? Am I outside of my comfort zone. And I think it was a, a, an act of courage for him to choose to come to Mosaic because, you know, as he said, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm one of the homies here, but there are many, you know, and he stood out and I, uh, it was a risk, but he found very quickly that he was in a culture of people who really valued and cared about him. He started a program with his brother? Yeah, Marshawn and his brother, his twin brother Marquan, uh, started the program called Feed the Streets, which is basically a program on the, on the west side and the bottoms. Uh, near where they came up, and basically it was a program where they were feeding people in their community, but it wasn't a community service, it wasn't a charity act, it was basically a building community act. Uh, Marshawn always believed you have to build community to move community. And so what he and his brother did was organized people, uh, usually as many as 40, 50 people would show up once a month to just pass out lunches, not so much um, as an act of charity, but as an act of connecting with neighbors. People would go door to door, people would say hello to people, people would uh, just sort of build a positive relationship between strangers in the community to make uh, the notion that people can be safe, that people can be together, and that uh, people of all different types of people are welcome in, uh, in the bottoms. It must have come as a terrible shock to you. How did you hear that Marshawn had died? Uh, I mean, of course, on Facebook, like, you hear everything. Uh, it was the first time I, I saw it, and I, I think I was really in a pretty deep state of denial uh, the night that it happened, and I thought, maybe it's a mistake, maybe it was misreported. Um, what did he say on his Facebook page? Uh, well, on his Facebook page, he said, my demons won today, I'm sorry, um, which was ominous, but, uh, you know, it was just the... The reality of it, I, the, the reason it was so shocking to me is Marshawn was full of life. He had a bright smile, flash, flash in his eyes. Everyone loved him. Uh, he could light up a room, and he always seemed to be positive and working. You know, he was a kid, a, a young man that could see all the oppression and injustice, commit himself to working for it, and still just bring light and life. Like, so he never, he wasn't, even if he was angry at the system, he managed to somehow bring positive energy to the work that he did. He was remarkable. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me your name and how you knew Marshawn? Uh, I'm Jacob. Um, I learned about Marshawn through the Mosaic program. Are you in it? Yes, I am. Um, I'm a senior. Uh, it's a two-year program, and I, this is my second year of it. A senior in high school? Mm -hmm. Yes. How did you know Marshawn? Um, well, Marshawn had come in uh, multiple times to talk to the Mosaic program about the importance of activism and the importance of kind of getting out in your community. Um, and I kind of learned about him through that. Um, and he personally, at least for me, inspired me to be an activist. Um, you know, I've held personally rallies at um, local Planned Parenthoods for, you know, against like anti-choice groups. Um, and he just inspired me to really go out and kind of help my community. Um, one of my favorite quotes he said, um, he said he always wished he had a gun that shot hope because he would light up the hood, um, which I just think is like epitomizes him for me. Um. There was an unfortunate incident after he died with a police officer. Can you explain what happened? Um, well, yeah, a police officer, I believe it was near Dayton, um, reposted an article that he found about Marshawn and uh, with the comment, um, you got to love a happy ending, um, which just set a lot of people off. And uh, it was just really upsetting to see 
law enforcement treat someone who was so afraid he was so afraid of law enforcement because of where he grew up and, you know he grew up in the west side of columbus which has been notorious for you know not very good treatment of people by the police and so i think that it was just it was really sad for a lot of people to see uh, mistreatment like that. The police officer wrote, you got to love a happy ending after Marshawn had committed suicide. Yeah, yes. He uh, reposted one of the articles on Facebook that was talking about Marshawn, who had committed suicide on the statehouse steps. Who, what happened to him? Um, he was put on paid leave um, because I, I, I would like to think that if he wasn't unionized, um, there would have been stricter actions, but he was put on paid leave. Um, by the police department of that city. Mm -hmm. Have there been protests? Uh, there have not. Um, I think I think Marshawn's family is asking people to kind of focus on how he lived his life rather than how he died. So, can you tell me your name and how you knew Marshawn? I'm Marshall. I'm a, I'm a senior in Mosaic, and I knew him from him coming in and speaking to us multiple times, and co going after class and speaking to him one on one, and actually going to one of his um, Feed the Streets events and going and passing out food to people. What is Feed the Streets, the program he started with his twin brother? Um, well, basically, it's a program that once a month, um, people come together and they have they have brown paper bags filled with sandwiches, water, snacks, and they go around and in the west side and just offer people a meal. And if people decline it, we let them be. And if they accept it, we give it to them. And one of the things that Marshawn would say before I went out there that really spoke to me was, the hood doesn't need heroes, they need neighbors. And so he would always talk about how we're not above these people, we're not their saviors, we're not like better than them, we're just here trying to build a community. That's what we're trying to do, we're supposed to come together as one. And I think I've tried to do many charity events and nothing that I've been through, gone to, has been anything like that in what Marshawn had said. Hmm. Marshawn was being honored by the NAACP as a hometown hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, just days before uh, Marshawn's passing, he was in Los Angeles to be recognized um, as a hometown hero. And so, again, that was part of the surprise of the whole thing, is his work was so impactful, he was making such a difference, he was being recognized. But I think Marshawn just cared so much that I don't know if it was anything he could do was ever enough to solve the things that were so important to him. And what's your name, and are you part of the high school program? I'm Cassidy, yeah, I'm a first year student in Mosaic. Mm -hmm. And how did you know Marshawn? Uh, like they said, Marshawn came in and he would talk to us about um, privileges, uh, white privilege, male privilege. Um, and I think he taught me more about privilege than anyone I've ever met. I met him originally at a um, Black Trans Lives Matter protest, and um, he spoke there, but only after he'd been asked. And then later, when I met him in Mosaic, he was speaking on privilege, and he said, show up and shut up. And that was like a main thing. Everyone in um, Mosaic talks about it now, that you show up to these things, and you're a number, and you're there, and you're part of the movement, but if it's not your place, you don't speak on it. You speak to people of your privilege, but you don't speak to people who are running the movement, because they're the leaders of the movement, you know what I mean? And um, I think that was like a main thing that I really have held on to. I've been protesting more lately, and I think um, things like Feed the Streets, um, Chloe and I went to Feed the Streets, and it was just amazing to see what he did for our community, um, the people that he helped, everyone who remembered him. He had such an impact on everyone who met him. My name's Chloe Jalicombe. And how'd you know Marshawn? Um, I first met Sha Marshawn when he, um, he came into uh, a white privilege panel to speak at a Mosaic event for class. And what did he teach you? Um, well, he told this story about, um, that really, really opened my eyes to white privilege. He talked about how um, he was at a football game one night and it was, it was really relatable. I remember like running around football games myself, but he talked about how um, he was causing some trouble and a police officer pulled him aside and um, he kind of called him out on it and then he, um, he drove him home and he had to tell his mom and his mom just started crying. Like she wasn't mad at him or anything. Um, she was just crying and sobbing and she said to him, son, these white people will kill you. And that was something that just really resonated with the group and like people are still repeating it to this day and like I can just hear it, like I can just hear it in his voice and it was just like, it silenced the room. Tell me your name. Uh, Jess, I'm a junior in high school with the Mosaic program. How old are you? 
Uh, 17. And when did you meet Marshawn? I met Marshawn at our first uh, privilege panel in our very first project, which was uh, white privilege. And uh, he spoke about everything he had been through, just as Chloe had mentioned. Um, and what really struck me was, at the very end, I had gone up to him to talk to him about being white passing, because I am biracial, and how I never really went to Black Lives Matter events, because I felt as if I didn't belong there. I wasn't valid in my identity, um, you know, that people would look at me weird and just think, oh, why is this white girl here? And the, my favorite memory is just how he looked me in the eye, and he was still, like, grinning ear to ear, and he said, you're just as valid as me. It doesn't matter about the color of your skin. And to have someone say that to me for the first time in my life, it meant a lot to me. And what about this issue of Marshawn's suicide? How are you dealing with this? All of you knew him. He went through your program. He was your age. Um, can you talk about his death, the steps of the State House in Columbus, Ohio? Maybe I'll turn to the teacher, Steve Shapiro. Um, I mean, obviously, choosing the ste steps of the State House was a political statement, but I think most people are remembering Marshawn for what he did and what his work was. And uh, in all of the memorials afterwards, everyone's commitment was to carry on Marshawn's work, to take what he what he was passionate about and what he was committed to, and each of us rededicate ourselves to creating a more just, a more fair, uh, a more equitable world. And uh, so I think that's what we've all taken, is how do we live Marshawn's passions in his absence? I think um, our teacher, Kim, our other teacher, said um, that everyone was saying rest in power, which is something that people typically say when activists die. Um, but she said, don't let his power rest, let it live in you and continue his movements. And I think that's something that everyone's trying to do, because he meant so much to everyone. High school students in Columbus, Ohio, remembering their mentor and friend, Black Lives Matter activist Marshawn McCarroll, who committed suicide on the steps of the State House, February 8th. Special